Welcome back, my Weld2 family. Once again, here with Cindo Rodriguez, Welding Fly Doug. Now, we're shooting a collaboration video with Sam. Uh, today, he's gonna be showing us how to do a repair on a live gas line, so you don't want to miss out. All right. What's up, welding dudes and dudettes? I'm here with a very old gas main. This is about a 70 year old gas main. It's from the 1950s. Damn. And what you can see here is it's a bare steel main. So this is basically what it looks like when it first comes out of the ground. And there's a leak underneath this encapsulation. So what we'll do is we'll use a clamshell, put it together, and we'll weld this seam on both sides, both sides, while there's an active leak underneath. I do want to make a slight disclaimer. I'll show you today what I do for informational purposes. This is going to be how we do it here, not how we do it everywhere. So this is what we call a split sleeve or a pumpkin. You want to tack it up in such a way that you can spin it on the pipe. So I have it loose enough on this main right here to be able to run a good solid root pass in a 1G position. But because I have a vent stack on here, I'm gonna just do a slight tilt. I'm gonna sit like this. I'll have my flare away from me going this way and I'll be running my root pass like this, like that. I'll tilt it this way, switch hands, and run my root pass like this. Shop welding products at weldlife.com. Durable goods that get the job done. That's wrong. All right, first strike up. Trying to get an idea of where my heat needs to be. Trying to get an idea of where the flare is at. Obviously, it's right under my nose. You can see on my left knee, I've got my wired remote working that heat. On a lot of these split sleeves, you'll go from gap to tight, gap to tight. The bevels are just always cattywampus all over the place. That section is actually pretty good. Grind and stop, always stops and starts grinding. Coming in here. That flare is real close to me. The wind is also affecting it, which doesn't usually happen in holes. Find the keyhole right there. Most holes are gonna have four sides, so you don't have to worry about wind too much, so the fire is just going up. So this adds an element of extra challenge, but I enjoy it. It was probably a little too close, honestly. I, I sense the heat a lot of the time with my body. I can't really see it because I'll wear shades from like a, you know, a 10 to like a 13. And... A lot of the time, I cannot see the fire at all. You can see, I'm just trying to get that root in. I'm not trying to rush it, but I am trying to be efficient. I don't want to spend any more time than I have to trying to root it in. You don't want to bury the root in there. You're just trying to get it sealed. I know some of y'all are going to look at that and say, oh, it looks pretty silly. You got that straight piece of pipe coming off the side. Why don't you do a swing joint? Well, you're right. We just didn't have stuff for a swing joint. So right here, I'm on my bottom section, part that is in contact with the main. So I'm not actually trying to build that up too much or root it. Just trying to get good clean metal on there. Pretty active flare going. So this is the first part of my hot pass. And I'm trying to get my toes nice and tied in. But I'm also trying to fill to some degree. These bevels are pretty thick. So I want to fill as much as I can on every pass. I 
on this downhill section. It's also really important to build up your transition from flat to downhill. Reason being, when you come in with your bigger rods at a higher heat, when you get to that downhill portion, it's going to want to basically chew into it. And that's no good. Okay, on this section, you can hear that sound. It sounds almost like reverse polarity. But what's happening is that is extruded metal. So that's this the way that they make these split sleeves is they use a die. I don't honestly don't know if it's a hot or a cold process, but they basically punch them into shapes with a big press. And what happens with that is it affects the grain structure. And so on these bottom sections like this. There's so much internal stress in that grain structure that when you start coming down that bottom, it basically relieves the stress in the grain and it causes a wild effect. And it's really hard to weld sometimes. If you've ever welded magnetized steel, it's a lot like that. If you've ever actually welded reverse polarity, it's a lot like that. So you have to be aware of that on all these downhill sections. Sometimes it'll make your arc cut out. Yeah, like that. But sometimes it's not a problem at all. So this right here, I'm clearly in a 2G horizontal position. Sometimes you'll get these encapsulation so hot that the distortion will cause them to suck down onto the main and you'll have a really hard time getting them to move. You'll have to break out like a three foot pipe wrench to get them to move. So sometimes I just get stuck in 2G but a lot of the time you can almost use that to your advantage because you're using gravity and you can use that big puddle we kind of stack even more metal whereas sometimes in flat you're not able to stack as much because your puddle kind of gets too hot at least on these you can kind of step out enough where you can really stack in coming down another bottom section here got 532 coming down sometimes this is just utter chaos but you really want to make sure on these bottoms here that you have good fill on that on that outer edge because it's going to chew it up if you don't and when you go to tie into the main you want plenty of metal you basically want it flush with the rest of the split sleeve all right so we're putting in our 316 cap right now I did make a little whoopsie in that I got ahead of myself and got a big head and thought I could cap it not completely flat and if you've ever welded with a 3 16 rod it's very hard to cap on any sort of 2G ish horizontal way it really wants to sag and you have to move that heat as much as you can and if you get topside too much it'll chew into the top of the bevel and it looks bad so you know rookie moves a little bit I thought I could do it I wanted to do it for the camera but it didn't work out guys <laughs> it didn't look that great I always stop before my downhill section so that I start cold and I can build up that bottom section. So see how I'm pretty much flush on that bottom? When I'm coming down into that bottom edge so that I don't completely blow it out. 
I always have to wildly oscillate on the bottom of these. Clean it off. Mm. That's terrible. Cap on the other side. Starting. See, I learned my lesson. I was like, all right, I'm capping this baby flat. Well, that's flat right there. You can see the fire isn't nearly as bad now because I have those sides nice and sealed and now they're just coming out the ends. So you don't have to worry about it as much. Lots of cleaning. So not the best, not the worst. It's important on your prep to tie into the main that you get everything really, really clean. Because if you don't, on an old main, you'll have tons of problems. It'll be popping and spitting on you and flakes will be flying off. Right here, I'm wedging the bottom section to where it's flush. Because if you're gonna have a gap on this, you want that gap top side. So you're not having to fight trying to fill on the very bottom. On this, this is a little 6010 quick whip root. I'm just trying to fill, basically. I'm not trying to get actual penetration. I just want to fill. And my wall thickness on this pipe is basically around 3 16 So I'm comfortable sitting a little longer than usual. So on my top side, I always leave probably see it right here yeah I always leave a weep hole top side see how those two welds on either side are split so if I do have a leak I'm leaving it to vent top side while I'm filling everything bottom so that in the eventuality that I have to fight the leak I'm fighting it on the top not on the bottom because that can be real difficult to have to deal with Right here, I'm putting in a cold fill pass on the bottom side of what will be my 45 degree final weld. Uh, I guess you could call it an effective throat, your throat for you guys in weld school. So then I'm um, capping 532 right there. I want a nice good flush 45 when I'm finished with that. So now I've isolated the leak to that one side. And you have to be careful with this. I'm keeping my distance a little bit more because when you end up isolating it to a more specific spot, it can seem small and then you light up on it and it causes all kinds of problems. Right here, I'm sealing up my weep hole. I thought maybe I'd have to fight it. Sometimes you have to peen it. Sometimes you have to punch it. But this one didn't put on a show, unfortunately. So putting in another cold pass here. I'm just building it up just enough to where when I cap with that 532 on it, that I have something that's new clean metal to roll that hot puddle over onto. And then I don't have to worry about chewing into the main and causing problems. So there goes that 532 in there on that side, 532 on that side. And I love bending the rods from 8th inch 332 to 532. I love bending the rods, it gives me way more control. Now here I'm cutting off this vent stack, being sure not to chew too much into the split sleeve, which I don't think I did at all. Usually I'll try to leave a little meat on top and then just grind it flush. On this initial strike up, it doesn't show it on this. We didn't get it on camera, but I will strike up on it just to make sure there's nothing residual left. Because sometimes it will blow out and it sounds like a little jet turbine taking off. With the gas escaping out of the encapsulation. But I just do kind of a plug weld and then a few stringers and she's sealed all right guys hope that was interesting this is basically how to weld up 
an active leak on a residential gas line. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, I'm gonna encourage y'all to reach out to a company, a mentor, um, anything like that. I've got my mentor here with me. This guy taught me how to weld. Uh, he's been in the industry for over a decade. Hey guys, I'm Stacy with Meeks Contracting, a uh, local welding specialist, and we do a little bit of everything. Carbon steel, stainless, aluminum, pretty much what I would recommend uh, for any of you new guys, up and comers, get with the company. Uh, you gotta get your knowledge and your experience from somewhere. You know, if you can find a mentor, uh, be at hand. Don't just think you're gonna go jump in a truck and roll with it. Uh, you gotta start and put your time in. Uh, this stuff can be dangerous, but there's a safe way to do it. Company policy and procedure is extremely important. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thanks to the guys at WeldTube, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>